Auto Line on the Road from CES 2022 is brought to you by Magna and by One of our favorite things to do at CES is to come talk with Gentex. We've got Steve Downing here, the president and CEO of the company. And we love talking with Steve because he's always got cool technology to show off. So one thing that caught my eye here is this mirror with this clear sort of transparent display around it. What's that all about, Steve? Yeah, so one of the things you know, as we, we've come up with full display mirror a few years ago, one of our crazy ideas is always how do you innovate and change and change your own products, really. And so this one, what we're looking at is our traditional FDM, but with also a so FDM uh, full display mirror. Okay, so yeah. which is the vi video mirror. You got it. It's yeah, a video yeah, yeah. mirror. But in addition to that, what we have is a transparent LCD, showing additional turn by turn instructions, other haptics and information. So and like right OEM. here, you can see, a, a, you know, like your navigation turns, a, you know, direction. Correct. But what's nice about this, instead of making the display itself bigger and losing forward field of view, you actually have a transparent display, meaning that you don't lose that forward view of the road that you're. Looking for. And then you got a little or, or smaller one here with you know the same kind of info. Correct. Yeah, one of the things we were looking at is what is you know what are the trends in the industry and that cockpit kind of a feel. How do you create that even in the mirror location? Give you that bent angled display facing you as the driver, a little bit of a personalization aspect. So you as a as an OEM or even as a consumer might be able to configure that display to show the information that you care about. Now you got all kinds of mirrors here and everything, but besides going through them all. This one really caught my eye where you can, t you explain what it does. Well, I, I know you and I know that you're probably a selfie guy. So what we've done <laughs> is we've created a system. It's a very popular feature, obviously, with a lot of drivers, the ability to take and enjoy what's going on in a vehicle environment. So what we've done is actually created a camera in the mirror. It's looking back at you as a driver, full color. You can actually hit a selfie button. It'll capture that selfie and then forward it to a mobile platform. Maybe it combines it with a forward facing camera that to shows show where the you're road. driving. Yep. And it can pull information off the bus system of the vehicle and say, here's the music I was listening to. Here's what I saw. This is why this moment was special to me. And, and it, boom, just blow it out in social media. You now. got it. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I know there's even more. Let's walk to the other part of your display here. You've got these driver monitoring systems, which are really important for you know hands-free driving to make sure the driver is really paying attention. But you've developed three different systems. Why three different ones? Well, as you know, we're kind of crazy and uh, we're never content <laughs> with just one level of a system. So the first system is really that core just driver monitoring. And if you're just trying to meet your ON cap or trying to make sure you meet the regulations, that system may be enough. Yeah. But the other two systems are designed to take that to the next level. Okay, well let's show a little bit of what this is all about. And what I like about this is, again, the, the first one uses the mirror, right? Absolutely. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna take this off. Yeah, yeah, take that off. Because the for software now. wants to look wants to look at different parts of my face. So what's happening in this driver monitoring system right now, as you notice, there's a it's a small angle camera. It's all located in the mirror. So camera, IR emitters, looking at me as the driver. It's identifying different facial features. So it's looking for eyebrows, eyes, lips, jawline. And that helps then the system and the algorithm run to determine what's going on, what am I doing, what am I looking at. Now what's cool about this system is it can look for all kinds of things. As I'm, as I'm driving, let's say I grab my phone and pull it out, what's well, gonna identify my phone and say, hey, now I have a driver distraction issue. That the driver's probably not focused the way they should be because of the use of mobile device. And it can detect anything from facial yawns to eyes closed, if you covered your mouth or lips. And so what this is really focused on is just that driver aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that you're ready to take control in a semi-autonomous vehicle. Okay, so that's the core driver one. Then you can go to step two. Yeah, and step two for us is what we went to as a 2D, uh, 2D version still. So, so now I'm in the picture, the passenger's in the, you Correct. know, the front passenger. Now we're looking at the whole cabin. Yeah. So now it's a much wider field of view camera looking at the entire cabin. And what it's looking at is not just you and me in the driver and passenger seat, but also that second row. Occupant sensing, detection, is there someone in the second row? If so, about relative size, what's going on with those passengers in that vehicle? environment and this is pretty unique because it's actually leveraging the location this would be virtually impossible to achieve if you have a camera mounted in the dash or somewhere where it doesn't have line of sight into the entire cabin of the yeah vehicle. because most right now they're behind the steering wheel right correct you've yep. put it up uh, in the mirror or at the top of the 
the, the console, the upper console. That's right, and what we found is initially the philosophy in the industry was you had to be looking right at the driver in order to accomplish this type of software. Yeah. What we've been able to prove is that through this superior location, center line of the vehicle, you can actually spread out the feature set do a lot more with the functionality, look at more than just the driver, and then you start to bring in a whole series of features that we know OEMs are interested in. Okay, but wait, there's more. Now of you course. take it to step three, which is a 3D view. Well, now it's a 3D view, and this is a very interesting. So this is a technology that people refer to as structured light. And basically what it's doing is it's taking, in this case, 14,000 light points and it's putting over the entire cabin of the vehicle. What that allows it to do is actually measure distance tell size, proximity, uh, proximity to the steering wheel or airbags, and do a lot of other feature sets that aren't previously available with the other technologies. The other thing that this will allow you to do is actually control um, distance and see distance, and it can measure both Y and Z axis away from the camera and location. And what's interesting, because of the way the structured light works, we can actually detect micro vibrations. So what we love about this technology is it starts to bring in some very new feature sets like child left behind. So what happens is in this and case- child left behind means you, you left a baby in the car. You left a baby in the car. And historically with camera systems, they have to be facing you in order to see what's in them. The problem with that is most infants are in, should be in rearward facing car seats. So what this system does is actually puts that light cloud on the seat through the notice, notification and the, and the ability to witness those micro vibrations, it can actually pick up the car seat moving slightly from the breathing of the baby. Meaning that now, even without having optical line of sight to the child, we can sense that there's a child left in the car through the movement of the car seat. This is really interesting, really interesting. Okay, now we've got to move over. You've got a, a vehicle here demonstrating even more technology. Absolutely. Let's take a look at that. And what I find so interesting, Steve, is you guys, you know, you you were the first ones to develop the electrochromic mirror, and now you're taking that whole concept beyond just the mirror. Absolutely, right? yes. So you're taking it into the overhead uh, glass roof, you're taking it into the sun visors. We gotta get in the car and see what this is all Absolutely. about. Absolutely, so jump in okay. and I'll meet you in the car. Okay. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice when you get in the car is obviously the sun visors. So one of the concepts that we've been working on, as you mentioned, is taking the, the electrochromic technology and finding additional use cases. Historically, we've looked at things like sunroofs, which I'll show you in a few minutes, but also this concept of a visor. So if you think about a traditional visor, it's been the same for forever. You flip it down, it blocks your entire forward field of view. Right. When in reality, you just want something to knock down sunlight so you can see more effectively. So what we've done here is actually put in dimmable visors, put the controls in the system so you can pick what level of dark you would like those to operate at, and then you can control those individually, or you can use a camera system to measure the amount of sun load and control the darkening level of the visor. I love this. I, I want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> the second application is actually up above us. So what we've done here is a segmented sunroof so that each passenger and the four captain's chairs in this Escalade can pick what they want above them. So in this case, what we've shown is two of them are dark, two are fully clear, but this allows ultimate control inside of the cabin of the vehicle. So that if you prefer to have yours darkened and I want mine clear, we can choose whatever we want as individuals. See, this is really cool because electrochromic uh, glass roofs have been talked about and done, mm -hmm. but I've never seen it segmented where each passenger can choose whatever he or she wants. Yeah, correct. And it's one of the uh, one of the special areas that we've been really focused in is maturing this technology to make sure it meets what OEMs and consumers want to see from our products. Well, Steve, as I told our viewers at the beginning of this interview, I love talking to you because you always got a lot of cool technology to show off. So thank you so much today for taking us around your booth at CES. Always the highlight of CES is to hang out with you. Thank you.